Joining us now to battle it out is our bull for today, Galileo Russell, founder of HyperChange TV, and Mark Spiegel, managing member of Stanfield Capital. He's our bear. All right, guys, thanks so much. Happy Monday. Now, before we start, let's disclose uh, each of you what your stakes are here financially. Mark, we'll start with you. Yeah, so we're shorted stock here. Yeah, we're short uh, Tesla via outright stock, and, and we own long dated puts and some short dated puts. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a seven figure dollar amount of stock that we're short. All right, and Galileo? Uh, yeah, so I'm a Tesla shareholder. I own 60 shares. All right, good stuff. Okay, so we're going to break this into three parts. We're going to go through the financials, so by the numbers, then we're going to go into the technology, and then we'll go into, of course, Mr. Musk, Elon Musk himself. So let's start with the numbers themselves. Earnings were good, right? These past quarters, this past quarter has been really good. Losses were a little bit bigger than expected, but they did be on revenue slightly here. Four billion in revenue versus an expected 3.99, 16% stock soared. You did really well that day. Bears did not do very well that day. What was your reaction when you saw this report come well, out? Well, I, I first have to ask about something you just said. Yeah. You said earnings were good. I mean, what I'm seeing here, this is the earnings. They had a gap loss of over $700 million. How is that possibly good? I meant the revenue, so I meant the top line. Top line was good. Earnings came in way more losses than expected. Right, so growing profitless revenue, in fact, growing money losing revenue, is not a sustainable business. Okay, so that was your reaction. You said this is going to continue to further my own thesis. Well, this report is awful. I do think um, that Q3, as a one-time shot, can be considerably better than this. They'll still lose money, um, but they'll have a bunch of regulatory credits they can sell, and there'll be some other things going on. Musk is promising gap profitability for Q3. I don't see any way that happens. I can see a, a small gap loss, and then, it, and then losses will just escalate from there. All right, well, that was going to be one of my questions okay. for this particular uh, segment here for by the numbers. Will Elon Musk and will Tesla be able to reach profitability in the second half of this year? I believe so. I think it's going to be close in Q3, but definitely in Q4. But I think looking at quarter to quarter profitability is missing the bigger picture. You know, I'm a long term investor. Tesla has been compounding their revenue growth at 93% since IPO. This is a growth story. The Model 3 just took 52% market share of not the electric vehicle market, but the mid sized luxury sedan market. That's unheard of market share for any car in any category. I mean, this is the iPhone moment disruption. They're trying to double or triple production in a year, so they're losing money. Um, it's not like they're going to lose money in perpetuity, but we're expecting them to lose money like this quarter and the previous one uh, as they're ramping uh, for the model. Re thing. Revenue was up 39% year over year. I just heard you say 93. Maybe you switched no, no, the no, digits. No, the revenue CAGR, they had 117 million in revenue in 2010 when they IPO'd, 11.8 I understand in ancient history. That's a 93% compound. No, I understand revenue. ancient history, yeah. but last quarter it was up 39% yeah, year over year. And that's because they're still ramping Model 3 production, so they've guided they're going to deliver between 50 to 55,000 Model 3s next quarter. I know what they That's guided, going to be incredible but, growth. But I believe for the year they're going to do about 22, 23 billion in revenue, right around that 90% growth rate. Okay, I do want to set the stage here. Again, we all look at the same numbers, right? The reports come out, everybody reads them. It's the interpretation of the numbers that we're debating. You interpret them at face value saying, look, the numbers are showing the growth is not there to be able to sustain uh, a, a company that doesn't have to raise more money. Uh, Galileo and, and most bulls as well say, well, that that's great for now, and, and yes, we see these numbers, but, and then you look for the long term. So I want you to respond to kind of Mark's question here about the numbers that did come out, which again, losses did come in greater than expected. Yeah, so let's talk about the numbers. So Tesla burned about 500 million in the quarter. They spent over 600 million. I'm sorry, million it burned in 800 million. In well, free their cash, cash flow. balance was down 500 that's not, million. You can't okay. say you, when you borrow more money, that doesn't count as not burning money. You have to look, if you want to look at cash flow from operations, which is um, operational cash flow and CapEx, they burned around 800 million. Okay, that, yeah, and I can see the if company is burning out, a ton of money. I just okay. think that's looking in the rear view mirror and that's about to change next quarter. If you look at the pattern of Tesla's free cash flow, including everything, the stat you're mentioning, right after the Model S and the Model X, after they ramp the investments to ramp capacity, they produce positive free cash flow and then immediately step back on the gas to continue ramping production. That's exactly what they are doing again, and they're about to hit that like cadence in their capex where they've spent, they they bought the robots, they set up the robots. Now they're getting the money for the cars. It's all going to go incrementally to the bottom line. They said they never need to raise capital again. Oh. The biggest inflection point in Tesla's business model has finally changed to where they are no longer relying on the outside capital markets to the extent they were. And I think this significantly de so the entire let's, story. Let's talk for a second, if yeah. we may, about cap, uh, Tesla never renewing really raise capital again. Um, I don't know if the audience can see this is a This is a Reuters headline. It says, 
Tesla slashes production costs, eyes July profit. This is June 22nd, 2009. This is a Reuters headline. Tesla expects to become profitable in 2016, share surge. This is from February 2016. To your point more specifically, you can't grow in the auto business without massive capex, okay? So the day they stop spending the capex, first of all, they can't turn a profit anyway the way they are. But let's just theoretically say they could make, you know, 100 million a quarter or whatever. Then you get revalued as a car company, okay? You sell at eight times earnings like Daimler, okay? They have an insatiable need for cash and, and they will never get cash flow positive until they stop growing. And at, and at that point, th they'll get multiple compression because then they'll be valued as a real company, not a story stock. Well, t talking about market valuation here, I mean, they have eclipsed some of these major automakers already in market cap. And we talked about this last time you were on. Uh, in, in the last earnings report that we just saw, we did see the Model 3. If you actually take into account direct costs, it actually was profitable. And the gross margin the company is predicting to reach about 20% by the end of the year. Does that not give you any hope here, Mark? I know what they're predicting. Uh, the company has predicted, you know, these kind of numbers forever. If you look at the numbers, um, under their, I, it's too much in the weeds probably for this discussion, but under their, I call it a, a, it's not fraudulent, but it's sort of a phony definition of gross margin, and in some ways it skirts the line in, on, on warranty reserve. The Model 3 was barely gross margin profitable, like barely, like, we don't, they didn't reveal the number, but it's, you know, 1%, maybe less than that, something like that. And that's, that's what, that's with a, an under-reserved warranty, which they bury in other lines and all that kind of stuff. Point is, Right now, the market is basically saturated for the Model 3. They are piling up thousands and thousands of them in inventory lots. You can see the pictures all over the place. Tesla claims it's a logistics center, but you don't have cars sitting for weeks without moving covered with dust in a logistics center. The market for the Model 3 is nowhere near what people such as uh, Galileo think it is, and that's why they can never reach structural profitability. See, okay, I'm looking at the data here. The Model 3 has been the best-selling electric car in the US for seven months in a row. Last month, it sold 14,000 units. That's more than 12 times, or about 12 times, the Chevy Bolt, the number two non-Tesla EV in the US. This is a story about market share, about amazing products, about consumers loving no, it's it. The story They're about investing for the future. Wait, wait, hear yeah. me out. Yeah. If you were gonna build a car company from the ground up, there's no way to do it without spending money. And we are in the midst of two hyper disruptions in the auto market. We're going electric, we're going autonomous. These cars are built with software first. Jack Monroe, the auto industry's leading consultant, just said the, the Tesla's chip looks like that on the F-35 fighter jet. No other auto com company that comes chip close. Was from wait, Nvidia. let me finish. That is the future. <laughs> That is the future of <laughs> the industry. Tesla just built its own custom AI chip that is going to be 10 times faster than NVIDIA oh. that they just announced on the latest conference call. This is a technology stock that's disrupting autos, that's disrupting energy. They're losing money now because they're growing at 100%. I'm investing for the vision and the future. I understand there's some risk because they're still in startup mode, but I think you can't deny that 52% market share, the best-selling EV for I, seven months in a row, they're in a yeah. leading position. Okay, what counts is not market share, what, for, especially for Tesla. What counts is how many cars you can sell, okay? They sold or delivered approximately 14,000 cars in July, supposedly, right? That includes, supposedly, 11,000 cars in transit at the end of Q2. Everything I'm seeing now, and I've got various public sources and just estimates, right. say, say they're actually only delivering maybe 10,000, if they get lucky, 12,000 Model 3s a month now, and same thing in and August. Point is, the market for this car, especially over $50,000, is much, much, much smaller than you're implying it is, okay? And they can't make money on it, and they can't sell it, they'll never sell a $35,000 car. All right, Mark, we gotta, we gotta just pick a pause here to move on to the technology part of this. The tech of Tesla is the next topic we're gonna delve into right now with both of these uh, gentlemen here. Uh, Right now, there has been a lot of talk that the company is not just a car company, that they want to have this clean energy future, that they are going to be able to produce batteries, not only for cars, but also for our homes and, and, and who knows what else, right? So that is the future you're betting on. What are the numbers that support that? What are the actual features that support that inside the car and also in their factories? So, for example, Tesla just built the world's largest battery in Australia that is saving the Australian government 90% on their grid costs. I already know what you're going to say. They didn't make money on it. I think <laughs> that was genius because they validated the technology. They just signed a deal with pg and &E. I'm sorry, it's going to be 1.1 gigawatt hours. This is the largest utility company in California in the U.S. They, are, they have validated a technology that is going to make fossil fuels for peak emissions obsolete. They, this is a multi-hundred billion dollar use case that the market is starting to assign value to because they have validated it. 
They so. validated, what they did was they bought cells from Samsung. Samsung has an energy storage business. Samsung would have bid on that project. They said, you know what? We can't make any money on our project, so we'll sell the batteries to Tesla and let them do the deal at a loss, which they did. I mean, gross margin was zero, which means they lost money on the project because there's costs above gross margin, right? So you want to tell me they validated Samsung's technology? Okay, Tesla doesn't make batteries. Tesla buys, as you well know, Tesla buys battery cells from Panasonic and in this case from Samsung. They have nothing proprietary in batteries. Going back to the other discussion, their, their, um, their uh, autonomous driving stuff is terrible. It tr it's, it's, behind, it's behind everything in any independent study. It doesn't, first of all, if that fictional chip gets made, and what are they going to do, find a foundry right. to make a few hundred thousand chips here? Their so the software is what matters, it's terrible. Look at the presentation from their AI guy that he did in May about the, about the, the software Mark, stack yeah. autonomous. He said they're nowhere. I do want to get also your reactions on the performance on the earnings call because you were on the one where he absolutely dismissed a lot of these analyst questions, and on this one, he apologized. Does this now show a new side of Elon that will mark a new era for the company? Mark, did it make you change your mind? Um, first of all, Elon Musk is 47 years old. Tigers don't change their stripes, okay? The guy can put on an act when he has to put on an act. We've seen what the real Elon Musk is plenty of times. Number two, that conference call was a joke. I mean, the first 20 minutes or half hour was just stalling with a bunch of you know, AI scientists. No one asked questions about the multi-billion dollar amount of debt that comes due with, for this company and how they're going to pay it. All Musk says is, oh, we're going to generate it internally. We don't have to raise capital. You know, I think they can't raise capital without disclosing certain things, but we'll see. All right. That's a theory. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's All right. So Tiger will not change its stripes. Galileo, what did you think yeah. given that you had a lot of time with Elon Musk on the last earnings call. Yeah, had a couple of minutes on this one too. Yeah, first of all, he actually did say exactly how he's going to fund the debt that's coming to the two convertibles with internal cash flow. So I just want to make that point. The second thing is the same way he this said is, it before. This is what I think is interesting and so fascinating about Tesla is that the bulls and bears take the same facts and interpret them differently. Elon Musk to me is by far Tesla's biggest strength. Like you said, he's 47 years old. He sold Zip2 for 300 million, a software company he started from the ground up. He sold PayPal for a billion and a half. I mean, the guy is the combination of an entrepreneur, businessman, engineer, software guy. This is the holy grail of an entrepreneur in the digital era. I cannot think of a better person to, to leverage Silicon Valley's DNA to reinvent the auto industry for, electri for electrification, for autonomy. I think what he's done with SpaceX, I mean, SpaceX is going to beat Boeing, sending American astronauts to the space station. This is something that nobody thought was possible. I mean, I, I'm betting on the jockey. I think there's a massive problem to fix the fossil fuel industrial complex, to fix, like, to make cars go electric. And I think the bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity, there's not a better entrepreneur in the world to, to tackle can you that. Tell me, can you tell me all of the uh, companies that this great businessman has run profitably consistently? So PayPal, I mean, he runs companies for I'm sorry, for PayPal growth. was losing a ton yeah, of money was, when they threw them out. Yeah, it was, but look at what PayPal like, is now. It's worth 60 billion, right. a 50X from where he I'd sold like it. It's know, generating billions of dollars in operating income. If anything, that validates that he invests, he has vision, and then I, later I, at maturity, his companies hit scale, and they generate billions in cash flow. That is validating that history repeats itself. Musk is running Tesla. I'd like to know how many companies he's run profitably, because you told me they're going to generate all the profits they need to cover their this incredible overwhelming they debt load. His, he has a track record of building companies that are so disruptive and exciting, they get bought out before they reach maturity and, where he runs them and you think That's a good thing to me. So you think somebody's going to you know? buy out Tesla at about a $70 billion enterprise value selling, I don't know, 200,000 cars a year when you know GM sells uh, 9 million cars a year incredibly profitably and has an enterprise and, and you know excluding the, the, um, the finance arm is, is, cons is selling now for less than Tesla. That would be... I think that would be a huge mistake selling for 70 billion. You can check my Twitter bio. You actually blocked me, so I don't know if you can. I'm hodling till a trillion, but that's that's the potential I see here. You know, so I, okay, I don't know how you know I don't know how a, how a rational person can argue with that because you're you're believing. Well, okay, stuff okay, okay. Let's talk about so Tesla not, is actually more like a car company than GM or Ford. Those companies well, are more like banks. Tech, you did call it. No, tech it is. Company. It is a tech company. But I'm finish it, my point. GM and Ford are banks. They're not car companies. They're leveraged financing arms that are securitized by internal combustion engine cars whose used value is collapsing. That's why the market is appropriately discounting those PE ratios used Tesla because they see the impending disruption in that are. industry. They're not, sorry, I, I just believe that GM and Ford and every automaker is being priced for the disruption that's coming. Waymo, right. autonomy, Tesla, right. I, and that's the reason they I, look I cheap. know you believe that, except that all of these companies, we didn't get into this yet, but you know, okay, so the Bolt is sort of their mass market company. Jaguar, Mercedes, Audi, 
and, um, and uh, Porsche are coming out on the luxury end with electric cars over the next one to 12 months. So far, there's been a head-to-head -head with Jaguar and Tesla. The Jaguar right. blew it away. All right. And that's going to happen with the incumbents are going to destroy Tesla. I, I, I asked for like an hour for this. I got, <laughs> I got 15 minutes or whatever. I, I'm so lucky, though, to have both of you. We have to move on to two last points here. I do want you guys to concede to one another at least one point that you do agree with each other on. I, I will concede that Marcus said that Tesla said they would be profitable before, and they have not come through and have not. I, I believe they will this time, okay. but I will say they've totally missed the boat on that. And they, they've I will, Mark, I will concede that Tesla sells more cars than I thought three or four years ago it would sell, but I also had allowed for it to sell far more than this and still be, you know, grotesquely overvalued and a good short. All right, and predictions here. I mean, I want to put a time frame on your predictions because as all companies that we saw with GE getting kicked off of the Dow, that all companies, their legacy will come to an end at some point. How many years out do you think it'll be before Tesla will see its light burn out? I think it'll be 20 or 30 years. And so sort of my prediction, what I've been saying is I believe the Model 3 is the iPhone moment for the auto industry. Even in 2016, I was saying annual demand would exceed 500,000 cars per year and it would totally inflect the industry towards electric vehicles, which by the way, I think is amazing for the planet and just an incredible feel good story and a mission behind Tesla that is driving them unlike every other automaker. And so my prediction is that trajectory continues. The Model 3 sells well beyond 12,000 a month that Mark thinks it can't sell. It sells annual demands over 500,000 a year and it drives Tesla to new highs. All right, and your prediction here in terms of the company's light burning out? So two scenarios. Scenario number one, they need external capital no matter what. So scenario number one is they don't raise it for some reason and they're gone in six months. Scenario number two is they raise it, keep the lights on, Next year is just a busted growth story because people see that Jaguar, Mercedes, Audi, and Porsche are, are the next league up. And, and Tesla is either Palm to BlackBerry or BlackBerry to iPhone. All right. And 10 seconds. Uh, the goalposts are seconds. moving. It used to be the Bolt. That was going to outsell the Model 3 200 mile range. I never said that. That is getting outsold 12 to I 1. I never you said that. You think a car twice as expensive is going to okay. do it? We, we got to go. What, what, I'm not what counting was the bet that. that you guys were making? 12,000 Model 3s per month. I right. believe Tesla will sell more than 12,000 Model 3s. Why is it only selling those now? We got to go. Why are they piling up an inventory? There's, they're telling Let's me. Let's make that bet. I believe Tesla will sell my question. 12, more than 12,000 Model 3s per month for the rest, for every month for the rest inventory. of this year. Uh, guys, this is <laughs> going nervous. to be continued. This is going to be continued. Do not worry. We'll have you guys back on. Thank you so much. Thank Mark you. Mark Galileo, Galileo Russell, founder of Hyperchase TV, and Mark Spiegel, managing member of Stanfield Capital. Thank you both so much for joining us here on Tedder.